This video shows how to import a point data set uh, into ArcMap that is not in any valid uh, geodata format to begin with. And uh, to use that we are going to use Microsoft Excel. Um, I have downloaded uh, some data here in my workspace folder. I have downloaded a topographic map to use as a background map. Very important. Always, always um, uh, get a background map and add first in ArcMap. Especially when you are importing um, geodata from odd formats. I also have a layer file uh, including the drawing order and the format of the, of the vector map, of the topographic map. And I then also have a um, uh, PDF file here. And the PDF file is, in this case, is an instruction document uh, for an exercise like this, several pages long. And in one of the pages, uh, sorry, here, we have a table with a point data set where, where we have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. <coughs> And the point uh, data set is sites with archaeological findings. Well, uh, we start a new blank arc map document as I have done here and go to the place uh, where you downloaded the data. That would be this place in my case in the catalog window. And we can see the folder here with the archaeological map, the shape data set here. And we can also see the we can also see the layer file here, but of course we cannot see the PDF file because that is not any valid geodata file format. Uh, we will start with the background map. Uh, just drag and drop the layer file like this. In this case, uh, we have some problems. We have red exclamation marks on uh, all of the layers. And uh, what you should try then first is to go down to the bottom layer in the group layer, which should be have some name like land areas or land use. Right click, go to the data option and repair data source. Now find the shape files, uh, in the topographic in this case shape files for, for this data inside your workspace here. Um, and the shape file is, is most of the case in the subfolder called clip result. And for the land use or land area layer, uh, you should have a shape file with an MY in the shape file name. Um, so here we have it. It says uh, terrain karta, MY, and some numbers and some codes. Terrain karta is Swedish for topographic map. Just click Add. And the next thing you uh, always have to do is go back to the bottom uh, sub uh, group, group layer, the land area layer, and right click and choose Zoom to layer. So there's the map. It's OK now. Well, back to the point layer inside the PDF file. Uh, there is this can be done in uh, some different there's different different uh, methods for this but basically what you should test at least first is to select this table with with data and copy it um, and selecting it you should you should uh, hold down the alt button on the keyboard so the alt a l t the alt button so now I'm pressing the Alt button. The Alt button uh, makes it possible to select uh, square a a areas. It should be important where you start. I, I will release the Alt button. Click on the white area. I'm holding the Alt button again. So now I'm OK. And the holding the Alt button will uh, enable you to select a square area. If you don't, you you will select a row by row. 
Uh, and also selecting a square area or a square a rectangular area should help you with the next step because the next step is to right click on your selected um, uh, on, on your selection the blue selection and do not do a copy sim simple copy if it exists do a copy with formatting in my case it's the second choice after the cop the plain copy com command so uh, do the copy with formatting command and doing that you have to wait for the progress bar in the bottom here you, uh, to finish and uh, now you open a new Excel document. I have already done that here. This is Microsoft Excel. Looks like that. Uh, should uh, if it is installed, uh, it should be available uh, on the program menu under the program folder by Microsoft Office or something similar. Uh, in an empty worksheet like this, select the top uh, cell like this. And we should be okay just pasting. Pasting can be done, of course, in um, uh, uh, s several things, you, w w ways. You have a paste up here. If you just click it, you will paste things that you earlier have copied. So this is how it uh, looks now. So now you should have values distributed in sim single cells. So if you select, you can select the top uh, leftmost cell with your mouse, just a single click, and then you can use the arrows to na navigate uh, through the table. And you should you should have a number or text displayed up here in this field, the so-called formula bar for when when you uh, move the. Uh, cursor around the ta ta table. So you can see now that the numbers are distributed in different cells. You, you have three columns, column A, B and C, and you have a number of rows. In this case uh, I fill up, uh, yeah, I have 22 rows in total in Excel. So uh, this is okay so far. If the data does not uh, don't have the things in the first row or the first column, it could look like like this or, some, or something. Just hold the mouse, drag right and down to the last uh, entry. Uh, hold the the border here and just move it up as far left as and as far up as you can. Uh, in order for ArcMap to read this, uh, you should uh, be especially careful about the first row. The first row uh, is uh, defines the names of the fields that you are going to import. And the fields, with fields I mean columns. So in this case, this here we have a Y, and the Y is the name of, of, of this column. And this column has the name X, and this has the name site number. Well, now, there are specific rules that you have to follow, especially on the first row, that sometimes is called the column header row. For example, you cannot use spaces. Uh, it cannot, the, the, the field name cannot start with a number. You cannot use Swedish letters like O's with dots and A's with rings or dots above. And you can you not use duplicate names. Um, in this case, the first field in, in the first column the, has a text. It says site number. And here we have a space. Not allowed. What you normally do with this is that you replace spaces with the underscore sign, like this. So it will be sti still be a readable text in, in, in case it should be descriptive um, in somehow. Uh, the X field, we have no spaces. We, 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 we can check that by clicking in the, in the form formula bar here. 
and try to select all text then we can see you have no spaces it's the same thing with the Y here so um, now we have to save choose uh, file and choose save as because uh, ArcMap cannot import the latest version of Excel you have to choose uh, the 97 to 2003 version of Excel workbooks and there you will have the extension XLS then you most of the case will be okay the newest version has the extension XLSX but in this case you use the 93 2003 version with the extension XLS and of course uh, you would choose put it on your workspace in my case it's uh, here and you might consider um, choosing a proper name arc points short for ar archaeological point data data just save uh, we can close the excel document for now hope that we will be okay back to ArcMap um, in order to um, now uh, if you have done things outside Arc catalog or outside ArcMap you have to refresh the catalog window just select the folder the workspace or the folder above or the root folder also and you can right click on it and choose refresh like this and things will appear that you have done that is valid geodata in this case uh, it's the xls file or excel file here uh, click the plus button uh, to expand the contents and you will see three so-called sheets and these are the worksheets and blank new excel document has uh, with default setting uh, gives you three uh, empty worksheets and in your case you have been working in the first one here and what you would like to do here is, is to select the worksheet where you know you have your data right click and choose create feature class and from XY table I don't think you can see that right, right I will I will minimize the window a bit so right click create feature class from XY table and you will get an create feature class from XY table dialog window. Now, uh, these point data set, if we go back to the PDF file, um, uh, you will, you have to, you have to check here what reference system has been. Um, that that is was was used for the point data and in this case we know that these these point data is defined in the previous national grid in Sweden uh, and that is RT90 and RT90 uh, defined the X and Y coordinates uh, in the opposite way as as the new um, national grid system Sverdrup 99 does so the <coughs> For X field you should use Y field and for Y field you should use the field that had the name X. And also coordinate system of input coordinates very important. You click on that button, click select, projected uh, national grids, uh, Sweden and here of course you have to choose then RT90 2.5 Gone Vest. And in this case, it, it is this one, RT9025 Gone West. We'll click OK and click OK. And output, always check where, where, um, where to put it. And our workspace is now this one. And we can call it, um, yeah, well, we, we, can, we, we can have this name, XY Sheet 1. It's OK, it, it will work and sh this should be enough click ok 
this was pretty quick. If we have a look in catalog window, we see that we have a shapefile here. And now, the background map and the our arc map project, so to speak, uh, has the reference system Sverf 99. But these points were defined in RT90. It's not the same reference system. And here uh, you have to be careful because it is very dangerous to mix. Could be very dangerous to mix uh, different re reference system and 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 especially Sverf 99 and RT90. You could have nasty little errors that may take years to discover. Um, and you can convert. You should you should now. You, we will now com convert this shape field uh, feature dataset into a new shape file with the correct reference system. This can be done in, in several ways. We will uh, use a tool, scroll down in the catalog window to toolboxes, click uh, expand the to to toolboxes and go into the system toolboxes here, expand it. and. Inside the data management tools found here, um, you have a tool set called projections and transformations. Here, expand that one. And another tool set called feature. Oops, sorry, feature. And expect that one. Expand that. One. And here you have a tool called project. This is the one we that we are going to use. Double click that one. And now, uh, for input. Uh, dataset or feature class, we go back to our workspace here and we can just drag and drop the first shape file we created, which was uh, in, uh, defined in RT90 and it says RT925 gone west here. Um, for output, sh take control where, where RTGS will, will put it and um, we will put in, we will create a new shape file. Arc points uh, converted, maybe something like that. And also very important output coordinate system. Click this button and select projected coordinate system, national grids, Sweden, and we would like to have Sverf 99TM. Okay, okay. Also, geographic transformation. I click the uh, button here to have the options, and we will then choose RT90 to Sverif 99. Now we should be okay. Just click OK. And we can see in the bottom screen something is happening, and something is uh, ready. So here is the new uh, point data set in shapefile format. And this one, we sh should only um, need to drag it and drop it in the table of contents on top of the archaeological map, like this. So here we have the points. Um, we should uh, maybe increase or, or increase the size and choose uh, contrasting colors of the points. We can double click here directly in the table of contents. Yeah, in this case, depends a little bit. I choose uh, a reddish color and I will blow up the size a little bit. In case... In case it could... In case... So, so we don't risk it. It's um, hard to see. Here we have the whole map. Yeah! So, this is ready. The next step would be to change the lay lay layout view and fix the layout and then you can save and hand in the map. Uh, thank you!